So you want to build a bait cannon. That's awesome. We're going to show you how to get the maximum distance out of it. In this video, we're going to explore the effects of barrel length on muzzle velocity and total distance for a compressed air cannon. And hopefully, we'll answer that age old question, does the length of your barrel matter? Holy cow! Oh, it's still going! <laughs> Do you believe that? first thing we're going to do is study the effect of barrel length on distance. In order to do this, we need to fire the bait cannon between 30 and 40 times. So in order to reduce variability, we had to rig up some sort of contraption to which we'd affix the bait cannon so that we get a consistent and repeatable result every time. Now as far as why we're shooting this up instead of out, well, I'll explain that too. So let me just set up this experiment for you and explain why I'm doing it this way. Unless you just had a vast amount of land and a bunch of people to help you spot these rounds as they come down, these bait cannons shoot too far for you to shoot them horizontally and be able to tell with any degree of accuracy how far they went. Projectiles are gonna hit the ground, they're gonna roll, too difficult. We can shoot them straight up in the air and time the amount of time from the shot that it takes them to return down to the ground. The amount of time that they spend in flight can roughly be correlated to distance. The longer that they were in the air, the further they went up, the longer the shot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a few shots at every length of barrel. I've marked this barrel every 12 inches from one foot to 10 feet. We'll shoot a few times at each length, record the data, cut a foot off the barrel, and repeat the test. So here are our bullets for today. I'm gonna be using these miniature tennis balls that I found online. They're the perfect, perfect diameter to go down inside this inch and a half diameter barrel. And it's got this little streamer that I've attached on the end of it. I cut these off of one of my kids' kites. Sorry guys. And hopefully this is gonna make it easier to see this thing as it goes up and comes down and hopefully to find it in this field with this tall grass. To keep things fair, we fired all of our shots at a moderate and consistent air pressure of 100 PSI. All right, ready. Three. Two, one. I heard it, but I have no idea where that thing came down. I think it went that way. 8.48 seconds. Now I gotta see if I can find it. And there's the main challenge I ran into with this approach. Buddy, I can already tell that half my day is gonna be spent just walking out here looking for these things. I have 10 of those tennis balls. I have to make 30 shots. Oh, oh, oh. here it is. If it was a snake, it would've bit me. So I'm gonna put a marker down here so I can just make this into a little search grid every time I do a shot. This reminds me why I quit playing golf. Here we go. 10 foot barrel, shot number three. Well, that might hit me. That's three consistent results there at 10 feet. 8.37, 8.39, 8.48. All right, that's three successful tests at 10 feet. Now we're gonna take this barrel off, cut a foot off of it, and repeat three shots at nine feet, and so on. From that point on, I was on a roll, man, and having a blast. I mean, how could you not? And thankfully, I was having a much easier time tracking the flight of those rounds, watching them come down, and finding them in that field. And from there, the data was just rolling in. All right, so now we're getting down to it. I've got just a two foot barrel left. And if you're in the camp of folks that thinks there's no acceleration happening within the barrel and you want a shorter barrel to cut down on the amount of friction, get the projectile out of the barrel as fast as possible, this section's for you. We should expect, if that's true, that we're gonna see great results with these really short barrels. And hey, look at that. My help finally showed up on the last shot of the day. Over here. That thing gets up there pretty good. I go slam out of sight. Hey, if you're still with us, you're looking to get the maximum distance out of your bait cannon. Awesome. Smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. There is a part two to this video where we're gonna put this thing on a chronograph and show you the effects of barrel length on muzzle velocity. You're gonna need to see both parts of this video in order to maximize your distance from your barrel length. All right, all that done, let's take a look at all of our data and see what the results tell us. All right, let's have another look at our full data set. You can see for this air cylinder and this PSI, the eight foot barrel was clearly the best. In contrast, the shortest barrels in our test did not perform well at all. Now this doesn't mean that the longer the barrel, the better, because for this particular setup, after the peak at eight feet, you do see the performance start to drop at nine and 10 foot lengths. 
Now I only had a 10 foot barrel to work with, but I can add a trend line in Excel and ask Excel to forecast this out by adding another three feet. Imagine if we shot 11, 12 and 13 foot barrels. The performance would continue to decrease as the barrel got longer for this air cylinder and air pressure. Now there was something weird going on in between the four foot and six foot barrel tests. There was this weird dip in performance going down from six feet to five feet and then an increase in performance from five feet to four feet and that's the only place that we see that in the whole data set. There were some changing wind conditions in the middle of the day so maybe that's the drive. But the rest of the data set looks pretty good so these results look usable. Okay, so the eight foot barrel was better, but how much better? Let's compare its performance to a couple of other measures. Versus the overall average, 17% better. Versus the next best, the nine foot barrel, just slightly better at 5%. Versus the worst barrel, that's a big difference. 60% better than the shortest barrel that we tested. Versus something that's more in that mid range, I picked the four foot barrel, just over 20% better. That's a material difference in the distance that you're gonna see with these things. So put together, what's all this telling us? It's telling us that the length of the barrel does matter. For every setup, the air pressure you've chosen, the size of the air chamber, and the diameter of your barrel, there is an optimal length of the barrel that will help you maximize your distance. But why is that the case? All right, forgive my art skills here, but here we've got our bait cannon full of compressed air and our projectile sitting motionless in the barrel. When the bait cannon is fired, it's gonna to begin to release the pressurized air from the chamber into the back of the projectile, pushing it forward and causing it to accelerate in the barrel. If your barrel's too short, like the one shown on the screen here, the projectile's gonna have already left the barrel when you still got good, usable, pressurized air still in that air cylinder. That air is just gonna dissipate out the end of the barrel into the atmosphere, and you're gonna lose it. It's wasted. Now here's a great example from our live field test using a barrel that was too short. Here you can see the tennis ball leaving the barrel, and then noticeably later, a bulk of the air coming out behind it, wasted. Okay, so longer barrels are better, right? Not so fast. At a certain point, your projectiles reach its maximum velocity. It's gonna reach a point of equilibrium between the amount of air and the pressure of the air remaining in the air cylinder and the friction that's placed on that projectile as it moves through the barrel. If it's still in the barrel at that point in time, it's going to start to decelerate. With this particular setup, this is what started to happen around nine and 10 feet of barrel lengths. Okay, so we've established that barrel length matters and you don't want it too long or too short, but how do you know how long to make it? Well, I'll show you how I think about it. All right guys, here it is. Here's the point of this whole thing. Now, you gotta do a little math to get there, but it is not hard. First, you're gonna start by calculating the volume of air that your air chamber will hold on your bait cannon using the formula down below. This bait cannon's air cylinder has a four inch diameter, so two inch radius and 30 inch length, giving us a total volume of 377 cubic inches. If it's total distance that you're after, based on the results of this experiment, you're gonna want a barrel with roughly 45 to 50% of the total volume of your air chamber. Now, it might not be practical for you to lug around an eight, nine, 10 plus foot barrel all over the place or down to the beach. So if you're looking for something that's more of a compromise, you're willing to sacrifice a little distance for portability, something like this four foot barrel in that 20 to 25% total volume versus your air cylinder range would probably do the job. Now there are a ton of factors apart from just the volume of air that are gonna influence the amount of distance that you're gonna get when you're out there on the shore. That could be everything from the type of projectile to the ambient conditions on that day, wind speed and direction, the kind of line that you're using and the surf rod that it's attached to. Not to mention air pressure. If I had done this with 125 or greater PSI, I guarantee you I would have needed more barrel. That's about it for us today, you guys. I hope you found this informative. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. We got a part two coming up to this video. We're gonna test the same bait cannon on a chronograph and measure the muzzle velocity, see if the results are consistent with what we saw today. Stick with us and we're gonna help you get the maximum distance out of your bait cannon. We'll see you guys next time. God bless you.